Oh yes, oh yes, good morning. <clears throat> Two, good morning Zoomers, good morning IG, <clears throat> good morning. And whatever other time it is in your time zone. There are rivers, streams of life. Now gushing forth. Yes, yes. Don't you want it? Oh, yes, I want it. <laughs> Come on, come on in. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Teach us. Good morning. God bless y'all. Good morning. <clears throat> holiday to you, sir. Yes. All there. All there. <laughs> yeah, teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Dear Lord. Hey, Reverend Jefferson. Good morning, Dr. Skillman. Good morning, Sister Michelle. Good morning. God bless y'all. Zoomers, let's go. Teach us, Yolanda. Teach us, teach us. Lady Vice, somebody said it's your birthday. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Jessica Ingram, spiritual director. Overseer Ryan, let's go. Hey, Lady Royale Ryan, good morning, Monty. What's up? And welcome to the School of the Holy Spirit. I am Dr. Bishop Coletta J. Vaughn, and I am a pneumatologist, and I'm teaching a generation about this wonderful, wonderful God who is so kind to us to be with us in the earth realm. So come on with me today, Lady Vicey. Happy, happy birthday to all of our July babies. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning to my first Episcopal assistant, His Grace, Dr. Herbert Jackson. To all of our bishops, Your Grace, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Pastors, fivefold ministry gifts, doctors, potentates, popes, elders, deacons, leaders, minstrels, worship leaders, Levites, ushers, greeters, helps, administration. Good morning. 
Good morning. God bless you. Mary Wilson Williams. Good morning, Jordan. Good morning, son. How are you? Mary Ann Davis. Good morning. God bless you guys. Good morning to our Instagram family as they are coming in, Lady Sun Sunny Summers. We just swing coming up the timeline. God bless you. I love this. I love this. When God gave me this song, I was actually in Rocky Mount, North Carolina at Truth Tabernacle. And you can get this CD at our website and Amazon, but you also can download it on any of your streams. I think uh, Apple has it. CD Baby has it. But get it. It's a great, great Hold on, y'all. It's <laughs> hold on, y'all. <laughs> hold on, y'all. I gotta stay in the flow here. <laughs> Teach us. Good morning, Elder Mary Johnson and Craig. You can go to our website at www.gotellit.org, Amazon.com, or CD Baby, Apple Tunes. Anywhere you want to get it, you need to get this. Teach us to hear. Let's do that part. I never say it takes all of us to. Yes, amen. <laughs> Dr. Street said, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. You got to say in the flow. Hey, Tawana, I know Stars work. Yes. He's so sweet. Yes, that's him. is there. Hallelujah. Yes, the hymns, baby. That's my favorite hymn of all in this. Uh, greatest our faithfulness. Teach us. Teach us. Teach us. Dr. D. Scott, good morning, Lucky 778. Aquarium 21. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yes, Dr. Bridget Horton. Let's go, let's go. God is so, so sweet. Thank you, Lady Arnita Copeland, for letting us know about our baby there as we are praying together uh, with you. We are driven, living, and we are walking by the Spirit. We are living, we are walking, driven, and led by the Spirit. Good morning, TJ. God bless you, Elder Gabriel Dilworth. Our Genesis family there, Pastor Michael Culbreth. Thank you so much. Our life-changing family, Cathedral family. Good morning to all of the saints, all of you that are virtual now live. And those of you that will join us in the replay at our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Good morning. Good morning, LaShawn. It's about to be lit. Grab your paper Bible. Absolutely. Good morning, Dr. Tracy Cathedral Reynolds Robinson. <laughs> Mary Milton Spencer. Wendy, author in the making. Sissy, happy birthday to you. God bless you, all of your July babies. I love you guys. Thank you. May this be your best next 12 months ever in your life. In Jesus' name. God bless you, Zoomers. Those of you that are joining us from other locations, those of you that are overseas, good afternoon to you. Those of you that are in other time zones, good very early morning to you. And good evening to those of you that are rounding up your day by Australia, New Zealand, those of you that are in the school from all over the world. 
Thank you. Yesterday was July the 4th, 2023, and over 700 of you were on. That lets me know that you are at work. <laughs> and when you're not at work, you're in class. And so I'm so honored. Thank you. Would you please blow up that YouTube channel, please? You can just put in Holy Spirit, put in Bishop Carletta Vaughn, subscribe to that today. Do that today. Let's blow that YouTube channel up. Let's get that. And also, we are virtual every Sunday on Holy Ghost Cathedral page. So you can certainly go over there and join us virtually in our live services every Sunday at 11 a.m. I just want you to get it all. God bless you. I want to make a book recommendation. If you haven't gotten it already, Black Fire, 100 Years of African-American Pentecostalism, Dr. Estrella Alexander. I want to make a book, book suggestion to you. Please grab this book. Amen. As you know, our SOAR Masterclass is coming up. Those Preaching Women, the Tribe, October, and I believe it's the 4th through the 8th, and we're going to be digging into that book as well as our study book, um, Strong Man, What's His Name? I'm going to be activating you in prophecy and deliverance. Also, you want this Spirit Controlled Temperament by Tim LaHaye. If you don't already have it. Arm yourselves with the materials. Good morning to my beautiful cooking sister. Can I just have a pan of mac and cheese? Just a small pan, please. <laughs> and my sister has my mommy's recipe down, baby. Could you just make your sister a little small pan of mac and cheese? Because I think I ate the fork uh, and the container. <laughs> Praise God. My daughters cooked for us yesterday as my sisters brought me some food. My sister sent some food over by my nephews. I hope you had a glorious holiday. I was in the dungeon writing, praise the Lord, and uh, getting this done in Jesus' name. Good morning, my sweet pastor, Pastor Michael Culverin. See you guys very soon. December, there's going to be a camp meeting. December, we are going to do a camp meeting. And it's going to be in St. Petersburg. Holy Spirit has settled that in my spirit. And so if you want to join us in December at St. Petersburg at the Genesis Church. Also, uh, 2024, looking to revitalize and re-energize our network of churches and parachurch ministries. Go tell it, network of churches. And uh, just uh, after the graduation after we've completed this assignment uh, then i'm looking to re-energize and reactivate our network and i thank god for the churches that are still hanging with me and hanging with the network and genesis of course like changing uh, the cathedral and several more pair church ministries are still hanging on and i'm so happy to be your bishop Thank you, Your Grace, uh, Bishop Richard Wolford. God bless you, Kathy Chisley. Rhonda Cochran Brookins, God bless you. Yes, yes, yes. Miles is eight years old and spent the last week hooked up to IVs due to the result of strep. Oh, yes, strep is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous, my love. So we are continuing to pray for little Miles. He's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. One thing about a children, the indomitable immune system of a child, if you give it some water and give it some antibiotics, by the grace of God, they bounce back. So we're covering him now in Jesus' name. Well, I want to make this statement. <laughs> Dr. Auckland, I'm telling you. Good morning. I want to make this statement, and I want you to hear me very clearly. And when I first heard it, I said, oh, my God, Lord, I, I never even considered that. But I want you to hear this and hear this very clearly. Are you ready? All right. From cover to cover, I've been searching in the scriptures. 
Yes, Bishop Richard, absolutely. I would love for you to come and join with me. Let's talk. From cover to cover, Dr. Shazetta, listen to me. I have been searching this, this Bible, this here paper Bible, paper Bible. And I, I, I want everybody to get your paper Bible back out. I thank God for all these devices, but get your paper Bible, get your Bible. Say, Holy Bible, get your Bible. <clears throat> Dr. Thea, I've been from cover to cover in this book. And when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said this, I was messed up. Here's what Spirit said. I have no heavenly ministry. And I said, what? Dr. Reggie, what? LeVon Watson, Camilla Cook, what? Y'all lean in, lean in. He said, I have no heavenly ministry. My ministry is earthly. I said, what? And I was talking to Pastor Gilbert and I said, I need to tell you what the Lord said to me. He said, what? I said, the Holy Ghost is not in heaven. I said, he said to me, I have no heavenly ministry. Glory to God, somebody, somebody, somebody grab that. Somebody grab that right now. And it made me have to stop. And I said, what did you just say to me, Holy Spirit? He said, my ministry, my presence, my influence is not in heaven. It's in the earth. I did. Do y'all hear this? So I stopped. Dr. Shazetta. I stopped thought about that thing. So then I began to, from cover to cover. I started in Genesis and started reading through Revelations. And I said, wow. Now this is why After three years, I have not exhausted. Three years every day, I have not yet exhausted teaching on the Holy Spirit. Because the knowledge of God is inexhaustible. I say, wow. And I had to go back and read from the beginning, from the beginning. LaShawn says, I'm reading the Bible now. Thank you, baby. And now I'm in Exodus. Listen to me carefully. Holy Spirit's ministry is in the earth. Now, that may not blow your minds. That may not blow your minds, but it blew mine. And I think what really blew me away is that Holy Spirit said it to me. And I was like, after all of these years that I've been teaching a Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're tell this is what you're telling me today in 2023. He said, I have no, I have no heavenly ministry. You're, you don't 
you'll see me in heaven. I said, well, what is your role? He said, my role is to help you in the earth. Whoa, my son, Dr. Kenneth Brock. Now, he's a, he's a theologian. One of the preachingest young men ever. Brock, John Andrew Hart, listen to me carefully, Audrey Jackson. I need somebody to hear me because I'm going to take my time with this. Dr. Skillman, I need, I need, I need everybody's attention. Whew. They advice that this is for you on your birthday. I need somebody to hear this. I need all you theologians, Bishop Jackson. I need all of you doctors of ministry. I need all of you theologians, MDVs, masters of theology, masters of religious ed. I need all of you, I need you to hear me. We have got to do a better job. Evangelist, the keep of those of you that are preaching, we have got to tell the people. Here, here's, here's what religion has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven. Send, send, send this, send that. Go here, go there. I've heard it all my life growing up in church. Woo! <laughs> Whoa, I'm telling you, listen, listen, listen to me carefully. This is why Jesus said, it is for your good, your advantage that I go. Because if I don't go, Holy Spirit cannot come. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Listen to me very carefully. Are you hearing me? I want you to hear this very carefully. I want you to hear this very, very carefully. So why do we focus our prayers our requests being answered by God in heaven. Walk, walk, walk with me. Walk, walk with me. Walk with me now. As if everything that we are requesting everything we are asking of the Lord has to be answered to a through a, a supply chain that comes out of heaven. I, I, I'm going someplace. I need somebody to go with me though. I, I need just a few folks <laughs> because that's the way we, that is exactly how much we have ignored and despised and underestimated Holy Spirit. <laughs> Whoa, Overseer Ryan, come on, Pastor Gerald Folsom, because we have been taught that the supply chain it's coming from heaven. Oh, come on, y'all not saying that. I need you to hear this. We have been taught that the supply chain of our prayers being answered, of our, our anointings, our resources, the reservoirs of, of manifestations have to come through the supply chain 
from heaven. We have not been taught that there is any help for us in the earth. So we just totally ignore Holy Spirit. Thank you, John Royce. Absolutely. I was reading that this morning. That there is no real knowledge of Holy Spirit in the heavens. There is no knowledge of Holy Spirit in heaven. I'm going to say that again. That by the time John got to the Isle of Patmos, and the revelation of heaven and all of the new heavens and the new earth and the gates and the seals and the books, there was nothing mentioned of Holy Spirit. Now, I, I know Holy Spirit is going to be there. But his ministry is not there. Somebody better catch this. His ministry is not there. Everything you see in heaven through the revelations is Father and the Lamb. Father and Jesus the Christ. The Lion, the Lamb. The Father. The Lamb. Seated on the right hand of the Father. Now, I know Holy Spirit is there because Holy Spirit is God omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. But his ministry is not there. Good God Almighty. Whoa! Good God, good God, good God Almighty. His ministry is not there. His ministry is over and in the earth. So why do you think that the supply chain is coming from heaven? Dr. Tanya Mitchell, Apostle, what, what are we doing? Kiara, Shante, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Why? Why? We got to reach. We got to rethink this, folks. We got to rethink this. We got to restudy this. And we got to reteach it. And then we have to reapply. We have to apply knowledge. We have to apply wisdom now the spirit of the lord jesus says is upon me and he has anointed me here in the earth now watch this you won't need the anointing in heaven you won't need the spiritual gifts in heaven. You and I will not need prophecy. We will not need healing. We will not need the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. We will not need the gifts of faith. We will not need the working of miracles. We will not need any of that in heaven. Good God Almighty. Whoa, somebody, some, somebody, somebody say something. I don't know what to say. <laughs> All of those applications of Holy Spirit are for the earth. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no demons in heaven. There's no addictions in heaven. There's no bondage in heaven. There's no evil in heaven. There's no grudges in heaven. There's no trauma in heaven. There's not, none of these things that we fight through in the earth are in heaven. 
So why would you need? You don't need that. You need that in the earth. Teach us to hear. Teach us to listen. Holy Spirit, we are listening. Holy Spirit, we are hearing. And yet there is more preaching about Jesus than there is about Holy Spirit. And yet there is more preaching and teaching about Holy, about Jesus, about the Father, than there is about Holy Spirit. And yet there is more preaching about Jesus than there is about the Holy Ghost. We have been told in the Baptist church, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but in the Baptist church, we've been told that you haven't preached until you go to Calvary. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They laid him on a, a, a rugged cross. They nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. They pierced him in his side. And he hung there until he died. And then early one Sunday morning, he got up from the day and they stopped right there. And say that that is preaching. And the people are looking to heaven. The people are left thinking, believing, hoping. And we never include. And then later that evening, he appeared to his disciples and breathed on them and said, Now, as I was with you in the earth, now, Holy Spirit, will be with you in the earth. Only Jesus has both earthly and heavenly miracles, manifestations, impact, and influence. Only Jesus the Son has both heavenly and earthly ministry. The Father is in heaven. The Holy Spirit is in earth. Only Jesus has both earthly for 33 years and heavenly from the eternity to eternity. I'm challenging every one of you. You preachers, elders, deacons, let I'm I'm talking to everyone. Levites, I don't care who you are. You have not preached the gospel if you're if you're stopping people at the empty tomb. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not complete until the day of Pentecost. Yes. Wow. I got to teach y'all. I got to teach. I got to teach until I feel better. Are you hearing me? Only Jesus has both heavenly and earthly ministries. The father in heaven. But no man has ever seen God. Only the only those that he has revealed to us through Jesus the Christ. Father in heaven, on the throne, Jesus, between both heaven and earth. Holy Spirit, earth. Somebody write that down for me. I need you to hear this. And yet we preach more about Jesus. Then we preach about Holy Spirit, who is in the earth to help us make it to heaven. This is why 
he is our advantage. He said, it is for your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, he, the comforter, cannot come. Cannot. We are not going to occupy the same space in the same seasons and the same time frames. I must go. My earthly ministry is complete. And now Holy Spirit will now operate in this space, in this realm. And whatever you need, he will take it from me and make it known to you in the earth. Ooh, and so y'all preaching this so-called gospel. I promise you, it hurts my heart when I hear great preaching. Never, never take the people to Pentecost. Never take the people to the upper room. Always stop with the early one Sunday morning. Early one Sunday morning. It drives me crazy because then you have left me in a state without help. You have not given me the help I need. He died for me. He was raised from my sins so that now I am free from sin. But how am I going to make it in the earth? And I have no help. Will Jesus come down from heaven and help me? Will Jesus come down from heaven and heal me? Will Jesus come down now and get me out of these addictions and these troubles that I'm having? No, he will not. And yet we send Jesus to the hospital. Go now, master, to the hospital. Go now, master, to the prison. Go now. And I'm telling you, it drives me crazy. I just want to get up and take the mic and say, baby, Jesus ain't going. Jesus ain't going. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will be making intercession. But the help that they need in prison, the help they need in these hospitals, the help they need in these schools and classrooms, these marriages and families and communities, is not in heaven. It's in the earth. He left us the help. Glory to God. Woo. <laughs> My dad used to say, don't send Jesus. You go. My mind too, Dr. Shazetta. Woo. Rabbi Kashkata. And now, yes, early one Sunday morning. Now it's the performance. Everybody waiting on that. And early. He got up early. One Sunday morning. And it's all about the show folks you ain't helping me a bit i'm sitting here bound up with crack cocaine and pharmaceuticals i'm sitting here messed up and angry and so full of rage and so full of disappointment and frustration how can that jesus help me and he's in heaven how can i get help how can i be delivered and i'm sitting here now strung out I'm sitting here now watching you preach. Tell me who can help me and who can help me today? Who is in the earth today that will go with me and walk with me and guide me and lead me and, and navigate me away from the crack house, away from the jailhouse, the courthouse? Who, who is here? Who will help me? Get me out of this foolishness that I'm in. Jesus, I know he saved my soul and I'm grateful, but how can he help me if he's seated in heaven? Woo. So Jesus says to us, I'm going to leave you the comforter. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you without help. That would be cruel. It would be cruel for me to come and do what I'm going to do and then leave you without some help. I will not leave you comfortless. Now, let's go in our paper Bibles. Watch this. 
And I want you to go back to John's gospel, chapter 14. Let's exegete it now with this information. We welcome you, Pastor uh, Vipada Das from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Welcome, 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 Pastor. Welcome. Welcome to the School of Holy Spirit. Welcome from Bangladesh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, Shandora Manesa. Woo, glory, glory, glory. And some of you are still preaching from the Old Testament and you're still uh, giving people hope that one day uh, God is going to come and he's going to, he's going to help. He's going to give you a miracle. He's going to uh, deliver you. He's going to. You're still preaching from the old covenant mindset. You're pre still preaching from the old Testament. Uh, you're still talking about a God that they were waiting on. You're still preaching as if he hasn't already come. You're still believing uh, like they're believing in that that has not been seen, that it has not been experienced. But Jesus came so that they could see God in the flesh. But you're still preaching as if they're, that they are still in, 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 in anxiously waiting, still in expectation. You're still preaching all of the good stories and I know it makes good preaching. I know it, but it don't help me if I'm addicted to dope. It don't help me if I'm addicted to sex and porn. I need to know there's a God that can come with me in my house, that can come with me in my job situation. Come with me. I need to know, did he leave me comfortless or did he send me help? Oh, shut up. Is there a God that can help me? Is there a God? Or is your God in heaven? Is your God in heaven? Or is your God? Can he help me? Can he help me right now? Can he help me with my children? Is there a God in the earth that can help me with my marriage? Help me with my finances. Where is this God? Did he send me some help or not? I had one of the major leaders of the Bible Way Church. Thank you, Dr. Hope, for reminding me and said to me, now you know that I come from Bible Way and we just believe that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. I said, and when are y'all going to retract that lie? When are y'all going to retract that? When are y'all going to retract and teach the people the truth? You know that ain't true. Because you tell us to tarry for the Holy Spirit. You tell us to be baptized in Jesus' name, and then we will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is it? Am I... What, what, when are y'all going to retract that lie? That is error. And so you have people that have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they think it's Jesus. That's crazy. That is absolutely absurd. When are you going to retract that? I have good, good friends who are theologians, who are scholars that want to keep making us believe that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son. Listen, you can't make that Bible say that. I don't care how much Greek or how much Hebrew you got. <laughs> God bless you, Lisa Kirby. Who shut up. When are you going to retract that and repent? When are you going to stop teaching that foolishness? 
you know that's not true. She said, I know, but you know, it's what we've been taught. I said, I get it. But you know that ain't true, Bishop. And so this is why people are so confused. I understand what happened with the Church of God in Christ. I understand what happened with Lawson and Jones and Mason. I get it. But let's just get to truth now. Forget all of this stuff. Let's just get to truth. I saw somebody on the other day, uh, last night on Facebook. I thought we was all preaching Jesus. I don't know what to do with that statement. I don't know what to do with that kind of statement from a bishop. I don't know what to do with that. What, what are you implying? John chapter number 14. Let's go there. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Come on. Come on, Mary Milton Spencer. Come on, Dr. Patricia. And we have... Uh, we have to teach our elders and our deacons the ministry of Holy Spirit. We have to understand the ministry of Holy Spirit. We must understand, Dr. Charleston, we, when are we going to get to the source of truth and tell the truth? <laughs> Dr. Shazetta says, we are preaching Jesus, but not just Jesus alone, not Jesus only. Jesus said, I'm not enough. I got to go. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. My assignment was reconciliation. That's my assignment. The rest of the journey will be with you and Holy Spirit. I got to go. He said, I got to go. I'm done. I'm done. Now I must return. The blood has been accepted as the propitiation, as, as, as the settlement for sin between man and God. That's all that I was assigned to do. Now, the rest of your journey will be with Holy Spirit. I need you to hear this. As some of you right now, I can feel the Holy Spirit just, just working in your brain, just working in your brain, working in your brain right now. Just, just rearrange and, and showing you the areas of the error, showing you the areas of the error in your preaching and the area in your belief system and the area of the errors that are in your application of scripture and, and areas of application in the word of God where you are in error. I can see it. I can feel the Holy Ghost going in your brain and changing, changing some stuff, rearranging some stuff. We have got to stop telling lies to people. We got to stop repeating stuff we've heard and we ain't studied it out ourselves. John 14, listen to this very carefully. Philip said to him, verse eight, y'all go with me. Philip said, Lord, show us the father. Jesus said, have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And yet you say, show us the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Woo, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Shandorabakishkoto. He said, do you not believe that I am in the Father? 
fathers in me and the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. For the father who dwells in me does the work. I'm in John 14. 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you that he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do and greater works than these. He will do because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the Father will be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now, verse 16. And I will pray the Father that he will give you another help. And now I will pray the Father, the doctrine of the Father and the Son. So I don't know how they make all of this one. It's error. I don't care what they do with it. It's just error. It's just bad teaching. The Father and I are one. So if you are asking to see the Father, when you see me, you have seen the Father. But now I will ask the Father, watch this, to send you another helper. Woo, my God. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah that he, listen to this, may abide, Dr. Mitchell, with you forever. Wow. Watch this. Verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Watch this. <laughs> because the world can't see him, nor knows him. But you will know him. Good God Almighty. Ooh. Ooh. For he dwells with you and will be in you. That's the twofold ministry of the Holy Spirit. To be in us and to be with us. If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will talk to the Father. And he will provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. <laughs> this friend is the spirit of truth. And the God this world can't take him in because it doesn't have eyes to see him. It doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already. Because he has been staying with you and will even be in you. Wow. I've told you all this before. Jesus does not live inside of you. Jesus is a grown man. He does not live inside of you. It is the Holy Spirit that has come to live in you. And as, watch this, Jesus and the Father are one. 
Now he introduces Holy Spirit to us. And now, <laughs> Holy Spirit will reveal the Father and the Son to us. As Jesus came to reveal the Father, now Holy Spirit will reveal both the Father and the Son, so that there would be continuity of your life, that there will not be some break off. Oof. <laughs> he lives in us, abides in us by Holy Spirit. Lisa said, I could have been so much further if I was just told about Holy Spirit. Let me let me just put this up. I love that, Lisa. Been in church for years, never got free. I could be angry, but God knew what I needed. I done seen so much messy entertainment. It breaks my heart that all of this power was right up the street from me. Oh, bless you, Lisa. She, got, she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit Sunday. I just figured out who this is. Got to been so much further. I've just been told about the Holy Spirit. Oh, but you're right on time, baby. Whew. Listen to me carefully. I need y'all to hear this. I need you to hear this very much. I need you to hear me. I, I need you to hear me. Watch this. Verse 18, John chapter 14. Let's reread it. Let's reread it now. I will not leave you as orphans. <laughs> Dr. Mitchell, I will not leave you as orphans. Where you see me now, go to the cross. You're going to see me crucified. You're going to see them treat me in the most egregious way. You're going to experience it. And I'm going to die. But as I promise you, I will live again. And then I must return back to the Father. So I will not leave you comfortless. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. That's what one translation says. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you. A little while longer, verse 19. The world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Oh, my God. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he that loves me. And that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Wow. It is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, Jesus answered, and my father will love them and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father who sent me. And these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. Verse 25. But the helper the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my authority. He will teach you all things. Good God Almighty. And he will bring all things to your remembrance. And everything that I have said to you, he 
will make it known to you. This, this is why so many are failing in their walk with God. Oh, Dr. Mitchell, this is why so many of us are failing and we see people failing. We see people failing every day. They love Jesus, but they don't love Holy Spirit. They believe in Jesus Christ. They have put their faith in his finished work, but have no fellowship, no intimacy, no relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is why people are failing we have set them up for failure. Listen to me carefully. We have set them up for failure. We have given them the Christ. We have given them the cross. We have given them the empty tomb. And we have left them without the knowledge of the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their everyday life. This is why you are mad and can't forgive because you don't know the Holy Spirit. You're waiting for Jesus to take something away from you. Forget that. That is ludicrous. It will never happen. You're waiting on Jesus to come and do this and waiting on Jesus to come and do that. Forget it. It will never happen. This is why people are in habits too long and in anger too long and holding grudges too long and walking in error too long, making serious mistakes too often because we have set them up for failure. We have given them the hope that they will one day be with the Lord. But for the next 80 years, I got to fight in this earth. I got to fight physical handicaps. I got to fight infirmities. I got to fight demons. I got to fight mental and emotional illness, trauma, stress. Anxiety, fear, lust, appetites. What am I supposed to do? You mean to tell me that I have no refuge, no help until I get to heaven? We've set them up for failure, folks. We've set them up for failure. We have preached the Christ, the cross, and the empty tomb without help in my day-to-day -day life. I'm losing my mind with these children. I'm running behind my son, my daughter. I'm in abusive situations. My kids are, are going nuts. Drugs are permeating the village and our homes. Finances are topsy-turvy. And you mean that I got to go through the supply chain? And you mean to tell me that I don't have no help now? That's what we've taught them. That's what y'all preach. Y'all preach that stupid stuff. Y'all preach that. I listen. I watch. You preach about a God that's not here. You preach about a God that can't see, that can't answer right now. You preach about a God in heaven. You preach about a God that's coming back. But what about my life today in this earth? And that's 
why people are failing. That's why they turn to Islam. They don't turn to Islam because there is great help in it, but it's today. They see the benefit of it in their everyday lives. That's why they're leaving Christianity and going over to, to, to Islam. Because there is tangibility to it today. It's something that will help them today with the social injustices, with the gender crimes that are being committed. It gives them some type of hope and evidential manifestations for today. A God, a Allah, that can help me today. Self-worth, self-value, self-economics. Somebody that can help me today. They leave in Christianity because we have given them God in heaven. And they can't wait. Man, I'm in trouble today. What if we had told them? about the power of the Holy Spirit. At conversion. At conversion. Why wasn't Holy Spirit in your conversion moment? Why did you take them through the sinner's prayer and never introduce them to the Holy Ghost? You set them up They got to go home and fight devils. They got to go home. Wives that have found Christ, married to husbands that are still hustling in the streets. Husbands that have found Jesus Christ and wife is in and out of clubs. Children are upside down. Why did not you give them Holy Spirit at the altar at the moment of their conversion? Why didn't you introduce them to the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Why isn't the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your new members' catechism? Why they got to go someplace else? Why? We, are, we have set them up for failure. And I'm telling you from experience, if I had known about the Holy Spirit when I got saved at eleven. On the morning spent at the Green Road Missionary Baptist Church. There's some things I wouldn't have did at 15. There's some things I wouldn't have never known at 16, 17, and 18. If I had known about the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm fighting devils. I'm fighting boys. I'm fighting men off. If I had known. Why don't we introduce people to the Holy Spirit when they get converted? And you have received Christ for the justification, for the taking away of every sin that you've ever done and every sin you ever will do. But every day you're going to need help. Now I'm going to introduce you to God, the Holy Spirit. He will be with you every day. He will bring things to your remembrance. He will guide you. He will teach you. You have received Jesus by faith and his finished work. Now the access that you have to the Holy Spirit, you must receive right now. And you must know how to hear his voice because he will guide you. He will teach you at the moment of conversion. I got to go <laughs> because we have underestimated the earthly ministry of Holy Spirit. I know it's a book. I know it's a book coming. I know it's a, I know it's a book coming right now. I know it's a book coming right now. The earthly ministry of Holy Spirit. I got to let y'all know about it. I got to let the world know about it. I got to let the world know. I got to let the church know. Pentecost is for all of us. Repent now. 
and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. 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 So we just asked several of you are asking, how do we correct? You got to repent. It starts with, you are wrong. It starts with repentance. It starts with going back through these gospels and reading what Jesus has said about his Holy Spirit. Repent. Repent. And then teach truth to the people of God. Those of you now that are in the school of the Holy Spirit, you now know truth. I'm not finished with this. You have a responsibility to repent too. You have to repent. It ain't just leaders. You got to repent because there is a Bible here. You can't blame leaders only because you didn't know this Bible. You didn't read your Bible. So you repent. Repent. And be converted. Got to repent, folks. Got to repent. You got to repent because you didn't read your Bible. You got saved and didn't read your Bible. Because everything that I am telling you is in this paper Bible. It's available to you to know just like I can know. But you don't read your Bible. You didn't read your Bible. repent. Lord, we thank you that the blood of Jesus is available to us now to wash away our sins of ignorance, commission, and those things that were left away, left out. Omission. Forgive us for not knowing your word and studying your word and hearing more preaching than we studied your word. Forgive us for our biases and our prejudices that we brought to the text that kept us from the true revelation of it. Now help us, help us Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo, I got to go. <laughs> Woo, Rabakashka. Woo, Baba Shata, Danamaposka. Woo, Rabababa, seal the word. I love you, Jolene. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do it as well when I finish. Woo, Rabababa Shata. Remember that deconstruction comes before reconstruction. Holy Spirit said, I do not have a heavenly ministry. My ministry is in the earth. Tell the people. I've told you. I got to go. <laughs> Ooh, share this. Share this wherever you can. Share this. God bless y'all. Hallelujah.